When the Indians of the Guarani tribe go hunting, they are away for a long time. Their weapons are still the same as those used by their forefathers hundreds of years ago, but only the forest has changed. Slowly but surely, it has shrunk. Nowadays, there is only one plant which is allowed to spread, eucalyptus. Areas where the Brazilian rainforest used to flourish are being replaced by eucalypt plantations stretching over thousands of hectares. Unlike the old rainforests which were full of life, there are no wild animals here. A few miles away, the sound of the chainsaw never stops. Turning over in three shifts, men and machines are on duty 24 hours a day. The wood industry is doing well. The trees provide the needs required by the growing hunger for paper and toiletry products. They process the tree's cellulose into tissues and toilet paper. At the plant, the wood is chopped, browned and boiled. Day after day, 10 tonnes of wood go through the shredder. Eucalyptus trees grow faster in Brazil than anywhere else in the world. They can be harvested every seven years. To plant eucalyptus trees is a very good business in Brazil. You create uh, hygienic products and it improves the, the, the quality of the people. And you create jobs, you pay taxes. I mean, it's like many other industries, uh, oil industry, you cannot uh, drink oil, but it creates a lot um, uh, of wealth. Aracruz Cellulose owns four cellulose plants in Brazil. One of the largest factories in the world can be found near the Atlantic coast in the state of Espirito Santo. Coming out as a white bale, Cellulose is extracted from wood clippings after a chemical bleach bath. It's the indispensable ingredient for the production of soft white toilet paper. 90% of the entire Aracruz output is exported overseas. A distance away from the plant, this business with the forest is being loudly contested. About 6,000 Indios from the Guarani and Tupinikim tribes have declared war on what they call the Green Desert. The Indios claim that Aracruz stole the land from them and destroyed the rainforest. No compensation was ever paid out. This is a fight for the recovery of our territory. It is important that everyone here get their walking. It's a sign of war. It gives us courage to fight for our land. The Brazilian constitution stipulates that land traditionally inhabited by natives is to be seen as their property by right, and the use of rivers and lakes should be theirs entirely and exclusively. According to traditions handed down from our ancestors, we know that this has always been our land. Whatever surveys claim about ownership rights is irrelevant. Those who understand our people also understand that we have to fight for this land because it is the birthplace of our culture. The Indios have hewn a 15 kilometer long cut through the plantation of the cellulose manufacturer. It marks the border of a territory of 11,000 hectares, which was granted to them by the officials of the Indian office. For Aracruz, this situation is wholly unacceptable. The Indians, um, they didn't live as a community in these lands. Uh, so they were not simply expelled. Um, there might have been some descendants of Indians that were living here, but integrated in the population as owners uh, of the land, and they sold us uh, all the, the titles according to completely legal processes. What the Aracruz director neglects to tell us is that his plant was built on former Indian settlement called Village of the Apes. Of course, such research is rather unwelcome. The cellulose producer wishes to be left alone. We are viewed as a factor of disquiet and are eventually escorted outside by security. According to the figures gathered by the Indian officials of the Funai, an estimated 34,000 Guarani Indians are spread over the entire territory today. Authorities responsible for indigenous affairs have sent anthropologists to the area to find out what the Indios are really entitled to. 
Experts confirmed that the Guarani and the Chupinicum were there long before the cellulose industry arrived here in the 70s. It was confirmed that they had always lived here in small communities and shared the products of their agriculture and their hunting. The government led by Lula da Silva has made obvious moves to compensate the Indian population for the past centuries of land theft. Yet up until today, the recommendations made by the indigenous authorities have remained unheeded. The Indios would like to show us where they lived before their mud huts were mown down. After so many years, there isn't much left to see. Tonino manages to find only a shard of pottery. Here, I have found a piece of ceramic. Our ancestors made it out of sand and small pebbles and mixed it with ash. The shard comes from earthenware, probably used to fetch water or store food. One can still see the mulberry trees that were planted before the eviction. We've lost our healthy lifestyle. Since the eucalyptus trees have invaded our village, everything else has been smothered. We're running out of water, fish disappear, and hunting grows more and more difficult. We used to have crabs, mussels and oysters. That's all gone now. But with the help of God, we will win our land back. The Indios are rebuilding their old settlement, Agua del Olo. In May of last year, they put up eight mud huts in the traditional way. They lived here peacefully for nine months as a traditional community in which there is no property title and where only God stands over them as the highest authority. But the federal police came to them with heavy machinery. The settlers were injured by rubber bullets. Ara Cruz had won the legal right to evict them. Today, Agua de Olo is dead. The eviction commando raised everything to the ground. There were lots of machines over there waiting to destroy our houses. We were all sitting here with children and pregnant women among us, but the cops didn't respect anyone. As soon as they'd arrived, they started to shoot and throw tear gas grenades. We all had to flee. They slaughtered us once 500 years ago in the time of colonization, and now they hunt us again like wild animals. We'll always carry those scars with us. The Indios feel deprived, their rights, their power all gone in their own country. They want to turn against the source of their problems, which lies in Europe. The ecological action Robin Wood took place on the 4th of May last year and blocked a factory owned by Procter & Gamble, the largest brand in the world. Chiefs Tonino and Paolo travelled from Brazil to demand an immediate stop to business connections with Ara Cruz. A small victory was won by the exotic foreigners in this German industrial area. It wasn't much, but the lorries were at least immobilised for an entire afternoon. The Tempo factory in Neuss produces tissues for the Austrian market. The protesters have no illusions. Things won't change that quickly. Could Procter & Gamble ever consider giving up importing cellulose from South America? It could be possible to do without it, but it would require a lot of research efforts to find an equivalent which would provide us with the quality standards that we have set for our products. Have you already thought, like other companies on the market, about using recycled material for the production of toiletry products? We have given it careful consideration. We have looked at ways to use recycled paper and cellulose, but came to the conclusion that today we wouldn't be able to meet our quality standards if we did. So Procter & Gamble would continue to process cellulose imported from Brazil because the quality of recycled paper isn't good enough for them. In Tre Palmeiras, though, people have no idea what tissues are used for. They're even puzzled that money can be made out of it. We don't want to get rich, but we want our real wealth back, our life, our soul, so we can remain strong. If we have to live on a shrinking territory, our soul and the soul of our children will mourn. This land means our future and the future of our children.
Until their land is returned, the Indios hunting ground is limited to a small patch along the river where deforestation is now forbidden by law. Only the Brazilian Minister of Justice can solve this conflict now. Will he give the 11,000 hectares of land back to the Indians, following the demand of the Indian officials and respecting the Brazilian constitution? Or will he give in to the pressures of the cellulose industry? In any case, one thing is clear. If the Indians ever get their land back, not one eucalyptus will be spared.